Hey guys, so you, we should be in class on Friday, and I am not here because I am in Vegas getting married tomorrow. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Connor. I love you, and I miss you, and I hope everything's going okay. But otherwise, let's tune back in. Okay, so this is what you're, well, what I'm missing, and I want you guys to accomplish. Remember, this whole unit is about um, relations and functions. So we've looked at what a relation is. It's anything that has an X value and then can have a Y value. Right? So anything can be X, anything can be Y. It gets more specific when we talk about functions because now a function is a special relation which your X values can't repeat. What we're going to be dealing with today is zeros of functions. So now we know we're talking about a function. Yes, it's a relation. And now we're looking at the zeros of functions. So what is the definition? Well, we're going to look at it in two ways. We're going to look at it graphically. What does it look like on a graph? And then we're going to look like it algebraically. Algebraically is how we do it by hand. So graphically, graphically, a zero of function is the point or points at which the graph intersects the x-axis. Okay, we're going to talk about what that looks like. And then algebraically, it is the points at which f of x equals 0. Okay? All right. And then we're going to, of course, talk about what that means, too, in our notes. Okay, there are a lot of um, vocabulary words that can be called zeros of functions, and they all mean the same thing. And a lot of times we get to this later in the year, and you'll see it again when you get to um, Algebra 2. But anytime you hear me say roots, x-intercepts, and solutions, they all mean the same thing. They all mean zeros of a function. Okay, so roots is the same thing as x-intercept, which is the same thing as solutions, which is the same thing as zeros of a function. So four words, four synonyms to describe one thing, or three synonyms to describe one thing. Okay, all mean the same thing. So. Let's talk about what that looks like when I'm given a graph, because we have the graphic representation. So on a graph, I said where it crosses your x-axis. So if I look at this graph, there's only one time in which it crosses the x-axis. So there is only one solution, and it's going to be x equals 2. So I can say the root of this function is 2, the solution to this function is 2, the x-intercept is 2, um, and the zeros of this function is 2. They all mean the same thing. Let's look at number 2. So here's my x-intercept, and it crosses there, and it crosses there. So there's more than one answer, so this makes you think, okay, we need to be in set notation. So x is going to be negative 2 and 1. And again, that notation is key. Great. Let's look at number 3. It crosses the x-intercept here and here. So x equals negative 3 and 4. It crosses the x-intercept here and here. So x equals negative 3 and 3. Right? Hopefully these are looking pretty easy. And it's still not erasing. I got a new projector, though. My bulb is going out, and so I got a new um, projector. Okay, number five, it crosses the x-intercept here and here, so x equals negative one and five, and it crosses here three times, so x equals negative five, zero, and three, right? So that's how you look at it graphically when it crosses the x-intercept, all right? Now, when we do it by hand, so what I want you to notice is that this function is equaling zero at that point because remember your x value is um, negative one 
And what's my y value? It's zero. My x value here is five. My y value is zero. So my x value here is negative one. My y value is zero. Let's look at all these values of y when x is something. So if I look here, when x is five, negative five, y is zero. When x is zero, y is zero. When x is three, y is zero. So what do all of these zeros have in common? Anyone think of something? Raise your hand, tell Mrs. Patterson. Hopefully, you said that all of these have a y value of zero. That means when the input is a number, my output is always going to be zero. So if I use that same logic that my input is a value, what does my output always have to be? Zero. So something, this output is going to be zero. What does my x need to be? So that's what I'm doing. I'm finding when my y value is zero, what is my x value? And I'm working it backwards. So now I solve for x. So I add 8 on both sides, additive inverse, 8 equals 4x, divide by 4, x equals 2. So when x is 2, my y is 0. So let's take a look at this one. When x, what does x need to be for my output to be 0? So I solve it. Negative 2 equals 2x. x then equals negative 1. So go ahead and take a second to um, go ahead and take a second to answer um, three through six. And I'll tell you what, if at your table you work together quietly and everybody gets the same answer, Mrs. Patterson will go around and award you, let's say $100 if you get all four of them correct and you only get one shot to do it. So pause this video and then jump back in and I will give you the answers after Mrs. Patterson has come around. Okay, so, all right, so hopefully you got the answers to these. Um, number three is x equals seven. Number four is x equals nine. Number five was x equals negative four. And number six was x equals 10. And if you didn't get those answers, hopefully Mrs. Patterson can make sure um, and tell you where you went wrong. Okay, so that is zeros of a function. When I get back to class, we'll go over by the graphing calculator, but it's too much to get all those calculators out. So that's where I'm going to stop you on your homework. Anytime it refers to graphing by calculator, don't do it. Okay, you're not responsible for that. So hold tight. I'm going to give another video on our next topic.